I hope you're having an excellent day out there. I got another one for you. Let's build this. Let's build this with better parts. Let's build this with adjustability in it. Done. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Just joking. Keep watching. But, but I mean, still subscribe. All right. My video files got corrupted while making this. It was basically the beginning files of like explaining a few things and getting the actual like measurements I need for this. So I'll do the best I can to get this going. Try to make it as least jumpy as possible, but I'm going to apologize for now. Sorry for the crappy video. Well, let's get started. Let's build this. So here's the stock tie rod off my mower. And I'm wanting to build an adjustable version of this. Now, I feel like I got three ways I can go with this build. As in ways, we'll just call those options. The first option is to retain the stock tie rod. And what I would do would be take this tie rod, hack these ends off, so really just get rid of these nubs, then go get two coupling nuts and two rod ends. The rod ends and the coupling nut, nuts have to mesh together so the thread's got to line up. And then you want one left hand and one right hand as well. Then, take the coupling nuts. A third of the way down, modify the end so it can slide over the tie rod. Then go ahead and weld that up. Then insert the rod ends and make sure you got jam nuts on there. Insert the rod ends and jam nuts. And basically you'll have a rod end with a jam nut and a coupling nut welded to the tie rod. And now at this side you'll have a coupling nut welded to the tie rod with a rod end and a jam nut inserted in it. So we're getting a little bit better here, you know, we're finally getting some real parts on this tie rod. But I feel like there's a better way to go. And that is to delete this stuff. And we're going to bring in a few more parts. We bring in all this stuff. Now we're getting somewhere. We got a complete build with some decent quality parts that's fully adjustable and the final product will be very subtle looking. It'll almost retain that OEM look and that's just what I like on a lot of my builds. But wait, there's one more option. And that option in lies, get rid of that, this, this, and this, retain these, and then we insert this piece of awesomeness right here. This is solid aluminum hexagon bar stock. And this will have that full out build factor that even to the untrained eye that they'll be able to look at and be like, hey, if that part's been messed with, that's not stock. I really like this design and this option. But for the mower that I'm building the tie rod for, this option is not worth it. So back to option two. Bam. Bam, bam, and bam. Here are all the parts it takes to build an adjustable tie rod like the one that I built for my off-road mower. And just remember, this fits my setup. Your setup could be a tad bit different. The really, the difference should be in like the size of the rod ends or the bungs or the tubing. But part quantity should be the same, especially if you're building a one-piece tie rod setup. Now the most important part of an adjustable tie rod is your rod end selection. You have a setup of rod end. A setup is a rod end, a jam nut, and a bung. That's what I call a setup. You want one setup as left hand thread and one setup as right hand thread. If you're building a tie rod and you put two left hand rod ends on there and you go to adjust it, all you're going to do is spin your tie rod back and forth and your tires are going to remain the same. If you go right hand rod ends, do the same thing, you spin the tie rod. All it's going to do is go back and forth and your tires are going to stay the same. But by going with one left hand setup and one right hand setup, when you adjust your tie rod, you'll be able to tip your tires in or tip them outward. So it'd be a toe in or toe out. And that is the point of an adjustable tie rod. Now, going over the parts I bought, I bought 3 8 rod ends with 3 8 jam nuts and 3 8 weld in bungs. Now, the weld in bungs determine your tube size. The ones I bought 
fit a three quarter inch OD tube, which is your outer diameter, with a wall thickness of .058. I happen to have a piece of tube laying around that would fit perfectly for this job. The only problem is this tube is not DOM tube. This is an electric welded tube. I would recommend anybody building one of these adjustable tie rods to go buy the correct, correct metal. Get DOM that fits your bungs. I'm running this for two reasons. First reason, it was laying around. This tie rod's not staying underneath the mower very long, so I'm not too concerned. Second reason, I wonder how strong this stuff really is, so I kind of get to test it out. Then the final part is this nut. This nut I bought as a really a adjusting point for my tie rod setup. Being a smooth tube and smooth bungs, I needed somewhere to put a wrench on so I could adjust and basically to hold the tie rod so I can lock all the jam nuts down. What I have to do is bore the center of this out to get it to slide over the tube and then I can weld it to the tube. So we have all of our parts, we know our design, we're basically ready to start building a tie rod. But we gotta get a little bit of information first. The most important measurement you can get is your eye to eye measurement. And when I measure mine, I always go center to center. Now, what gives us the eye to eye measurement? Basically our front end. Wherever the tie rod has to bolt two on one to go to the other, that's the measurement we need. Now, now mine is easy. My front end is remaining stock. And my tie rod is in great shape. So I can just get my measurement off the tie rod. And all I have to do is pick the spot where it connects to the steering arms and get center of the rod to center of the rod over here, get that measurement. And that's what my eye to eye needs to be. This measurement doesn't have to be 100% crucial because we have adjustment in our rod ends, but you want to get it fairly close. This one I'm doing is 20 inches. Now, say I changed my width. What I'd have to do is mount my front end up, I put some rims on there, and then I'll measure across the front of the rim to the other rim, and then I'll do the same thing across the back of the rim. Get the two measurements the same. Then I know the spindles are sitting square to each other. Then just go on the back side on your steering arm and measure from center of the hole on the one spindle to center of the hole on the other spindle. And that's the measurement you need. So, my tractor or setup uses 20 inches. Put that there and that there. Now the second measurement I need to get is a measurement for the length of the tube. But the way I figure this out is I assemble a rod end first and get it positioned to where I want it for like my initial like tie rod setup. In other words, I'll screw the bung onto the rod end like so. And I'll leave a little bit of the thread stick out. Really, I leave like a third to almost a half out. Now, having this set up, I can figure out how much space I'm going to lose. Let's put that back over there. How much space I'm going to lose from the center of the eye to the edge of the bung where the bung slides in the tubing. So, what I do is I take a tape measure, I'll hook it onto the lip and then measure to the center of the eye. And this one I get one and three quarters of an inch. So now, to get the tube length, we know we're going to lose an inch and three quarter per side from center to lip. And then this is going to be the same. These use the same length. So an inch and three quarter here. This is where my eighth grade math comes into play. Inch and three quarter and an inch and three quarter is three and a half inches. So now I know we're going to lose three and a half inches total out of that 20 inch eye to eye measurement to get the length of the tubing. So thank God I took algebra. 20 inches, we're taking three and a half away from it, gives us a length of 16 and a half inches long. So on my 
set up here to get 20 inches eye to eye the center I put a 16 and a half inch piece of tubing in here with my rod ends being set about halfway out and that's really all there is that you need to know to start building your adjustable tie rod is get your eye to eye hardware will tell you what your tubing length is and then it's basically just the fabrication work go cut the stuff weld it on and get it thrown on your rig and other than that the build video of this will be posted in a couple days so don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get notified for that video and notified for other videos that could be happening down the road and I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. As always, enjoy. Have a good one. I really dislike this adjustment nut. I really, I don't like the looks of it on there. It looks bulky, looks out of place, looks like garbage. Since I haven't tack welded on there, I'll probably grind these tack welds off at a later date. I'll probably not actually weld this thing solid. And on the, um, bung here i'll probably grind some flat spots at a wrench will fit and then use that as my adjustment point and get rid of this nut because i like i said i cannot stand the looks of this thing on here these spindles i had to modify as well and not by my gussets that was a previous video now what i had to do to them the steering arm utilize these plastic bushings you know this one's completely shot this one's not so bad but these plastic bushings utilize a whole, at least a half inch in diameter, or it was actually bigger than that. But because I was using 3 8 rod ends, I didn't want that half inch hole there. So I went ahead, I filled it full of weld, ground it smooth, and then I sunk a 3 8 hole in. And I moved the hole, I think an eighth of an inch backwards or something. I forget what I did in the video, but you'll find out. But I had to do that mod as well. The only thing I haven't shown you are these cone like safety spacer things. I will be running the cone things here on my setup once everything's installed, but for the actual build I don't need them right now. But the way these work, I have my spindle with the steering arm on there. One will sit on top of the steering arm, then the rod end will sit on top of one, or that one, and then I'll put one on top of the rod end and then put my bolt down through. What these things do is a couple things. One thing I'm not sure of though. The first thing, the safety part of them. If this ball would pop out of the rod end and you have just a bolt holding that down, if the bolt head's not bigger than the ball, the whole rod end will pop off of it and hit the ground and cause you some issues. So these are a little bit bigger in diameter than the ball. So when this is on top, bolted down, and this would happen to pop off the ball, it can't go no higher because it can't get over the outer diameter of this. Now, the second thing, this helps add some clearance into parts. Say my steering arm has a slight bend upwards in there. This is running across, and I need to get a little bit of flex. This is going to be, going to be hitting my steering arm before... I get the total flex out of the ball. So by spacing it up a little bit, I'm able to get the total flex out of the ball and not hit the steering arm. And then the third thing, I don't know if you gain any more angle out of it, but I was told you get a tad bit of angle. Not a whole bunch, but just a little bit. Sometimes just a little bit helps. Any questions, feel free to comment. If you guys want to see a better in-depth video, something that's not like hobcob together like this one is now, Hit me up. I got more of these to build down the road. I can do like a complete in-depth build from really beginning to end on everything I do. Because some are going to be completely custom. Hint, hint. And some are just going to be kind of like stock replacements.